Uh, I am Kelly Blackwell. I will be your presenter today. I'm co-director for the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. And I'm going to be talking about assistive technology for remote and hybrid uh, work options today. Uh, and then I've got Nick, uh, my colleague who will be chat moderating. He is our social media and outreach specialist. If you wanted to go ahead and just say hello, Nick. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I will be helping with the chat moderation and I'm also reading image descriptions for you. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll just move on to the next slide. This is the title slide here. Oh, now I need to go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got a little happy with the advancement. Okay. Um, it's, it's on the questions and housekeeping slide. Okay, I don't know why it's not reading it to me. My apologies, everyone. All right, so for today, uh, we're pro probably all very familiar now with Zoom. Uh, however, I just wanted to put a few reminders for housekeeping. Um, we ask that you do stay muted throughout unless you have a question, then by all means, feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, if you would like to raise your hand to be called upon, that's great as well. Um, if you would like your video on or off, um, I do have a vision impairment and use a screen reader. So many of you heard my screen reader babbling on there for a moment because I was sharing sound with the screen share. Um, but the for those that also might use a screen reader, the key commands for the housekeeping piece. So if you want to raise your hand, it's Alt Y. And similarly, if you wanted to lower your hand, it's Alt Y to access the chat, it's Alt H. And uh, to unmute or mute, it's Alt A. We welcome participation today, however you are most comfortable. If you are not comfortable interacting with us as a group, we certainly welcome you to reach out through email. And then Nick, if you wanna go ahead and describe the image on that slide. Oh, that is an image of a light bulb inside a thought bubble, and it is over a black background. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to move on. I am not. Okay. I'm going to fix this. This is, I need to get it, and I apologize, everyone. Um, it's saying that it's unavailable. So let me move. That moved, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. If, if you're trying to get back to um, the presentation mode, it's control F5. I did that and it's not liking me. Okay, there we go. There we go. And if you want to just go to the next slide, there we go. Okay, my apologies, everyone. I think I'm on track now. So this is a slide that highlights our MDRC mission. And if you've participated in our trainings in the past, uh, this probably looks very familiar to you, but we like to highlight it because it's hopefully a thread that you will see throughout each of our presentations and in the work that we do in general. And pictured on this slide is our um, updated MDRC logo. But, um, Okay, so our mission is that MDRC cultivates disability pride and strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability is a natural and beautiful, sorry, part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. Sorry, I had my screen reader in my ear there. Okay. And I've got this Zoom pop up. Is anyone else seeing that? Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, um, what is the assistive technology program? We are a statewide program that helps 
folks gain access to assistive technology options. Uh, so that could be in the form of just learning about AT, getting your hands on AT. Um, so what's really cool about our program is that we are truly a program for people with disabilities by people with disabilities. So any of the AT specialists that you might have an opportunity to interact with when getting a demo or loan or whatever it might be, we identify as folks with disabilities. So as I mentioned, uh, I have a vision impairment um, and I use screen reading software, which a lot of you heard <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, so I specialize in AT for low vision. Um, but have a, a vast knowledge of AT in many other areas. And we have uh, folks that, for example, their um, focus area is maybe outdoor rec or Asian A that's on. I'm going to highlight her for just a moment. She does AT for youth. Um, and then we have Laura Hall, who is a longtime uh, staff member with the AT program, and she does environmental controls like Alexa and Google Home and things like that. So just to give you an example of that. Um, so on this slide is also ways that you can connect with the AT team. So you can request a demonstration by going to our web form, um, visiting our website, mymdrc.org. You can call our 800 number, 800. 5780280. Um, you can stop in our office. Even though we do serve the entire state, uh, our main hub, if you will, is located in East Lansing at the corner of East uh, Lake Lansing and Abbott Road. So um, just to sort of sum up, we provide demonstrations short-term and open-ended loans of devices. We can do trainings for different businesses and organizations. Um, if you just have a quick question that you want to have answered, you can give us a call, send an email. Um, we provide technical assistance, um, pretty much all things AT we have a passion for, so. All right, can you describe the image on the slide? Yes, this is a image of our uh, logo. This is a white light bulb that has a like seedling growing inside of it. And below that white light bulb is text that reads Michigan Assistive Technology Program. And it is sitting over a navy blue background. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so what is assistive technology? In its basic form, assistive technology is any tool, software, equipment, it's any device that's gonna help someone with a disability, including older adults, be able to perform the tasks that they want to be able to do. So whether that's recreation or employment, in this case, we're gonna be talking a lot about, or community living, anything that's gonna help make something possible. And that's something that I wanted to highlight as well. Um, so we say that technology can often make things easier for most people. Um, however, assistive technology makes, it opens up possibilities for folks with disabilities. So I am able to use Zoom and my computer and all those good things by way of my screen reader. If I did not have my screen reader, I would not have adequate access to that function. Okay, so on, pictured on this slide is a doorknob gripping device. It's a pretty low tech. Just to kind of describe that not all AT has to be high tech and it doesn't have to include a battery or something that plugs in. And then I believe there's also a pill case organizer that's multicolored and then an image of an older woman who's using a walker outside. All right, what to expect today for AT and remote work? Um, and then the, just really quickly, the image on this slide is of a notebook with the um, wording today in the numbers one, two, three, and four. Okay. 
So before we move into AT specifically, we're going to do a short overview of the ADA and reasonable accommodations. We're going to touch on ableism and internal ableism, and we will go over a large variety of assistive technology options and certainly go over um, a variety of resources. And then we will have some discussion questions as well. All right, so what is the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act? Um, that is a law, a civil rights law for individuals with disabilities um, that in its basic form says um, there's equal access, period. Um, it's a, was passed on July 26, 1990. So we just celebrated the 32nd annual passage of that act. Um, And then, um, Nick, because I've got my <laughs> jaws in my ear, can you read the description on the slide, please? Yes. The definition, I mean, sorry. Oh, for the ADA? Yes. So the American Disabilities Act, or ADA, is a civil rights law that was passed in 1990 that makes sure people with disabilities have protection against discrimination, including the workplace. Perfect, okay. And then the image on this slide is of um, someone seated at a table, correct? It's a chair user and is using a laptop. It, uh, she is writing on a piece of paper. Oh, thank you. All right, we're gonna move to the next slide. Who is covered under the ADA? Um, and Nick, if I can have you read this long description as well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so the ADA states that one must have a disability, which is defined as a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. A person who has a history or record of such an impairment or a person who is perceived by others as having such an impairment. So that's a pretty broad definition, and I personally like that it's broad. And I also like to point out for me, I think the ADA is the minimum standard we should go for. Um, here at MDRC and certainly in the AT program, we want to provide as much inclusion as possible. Uh, so if you look at this, statement and sort of digest it and take it apart a little bit. It says that anyone with a physical or mental, and they actually do have um, a list of um, qualifying disabilities. It's a quite an extensive list. Um, that, so someone that is substantially limited by one or more life activities or someone that is perceived to be limited. So I personally like that it's um, pretty open and broad covers a lot of folks in my community. So, um, and then the image on this slide, can you go ahead and describe that, Nick? Yes, this is an image of an indigenous two-spirit person and a black woman that face each other and gesture while smiling and speaking into microphones. And they're both wearing prosthetic legs. Um, this image is also from Disabled in Here. Awesome, thank you. All right, so another just quick discussion before we move into specific AT devices. I thought it very important to talk about ableism and internal ableism because that can affect significantly how we perhaps request an accommodation for the workplace or just even the general assistive technology that we have access to. And I also wanted to make it a point to say, uh, today you are in a safe space. Um, it's a judgment-free zone. So wherever you are in your journey with acceptance of your own disability experience, that's where you are. And we absolutely honor and respect that. 
Uh, I will say that um, for me, um, I am fully into my own disability pride. And so I love to share about my disability experience and how it has impacted me and all of the great opportunities that it has afforded me. And I certainly feel a sense of community. So that's where I'm at with my own disability experience, but um, we understand that that's not everyone's experience. So ableism, this is hopefully a term that um, we all are becoming more familiar with and helping to advocate for and work in a way that um, we are standing up against ableism. So it's discrimination against folks with disabilities. So that um, can certainly be in actions, in the language that we use and so on and so forth. And then also on this, um, we will talk about, I just heard Frank in the chat, we will talk about that in just a moment. Um, so with internal labelism, um, and this is just some quotes from an article on the mighty, um, that's when you yourself, and I will say I used to experience internal labelism um, and probably do still in some degree until it's brought to my attention and then I kind of reel it back and say, whoa, let's work on this. Um, but so that's feeling less than. So when I could see better than I can now, I would say, well, I'm not, I don't have that same experience. So I don't quite feel like I fit into that community or I'm not as disabled as, and then fill in the blank. So those are examples of internal ableism that can certainly impact your own motivation and your own right to have those reasonable accommodations that um, are AT related. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next slide. All right, reasonable accommodations. These are things that are under the ADA and what is considered to be reasonable. Um, one second, I'm just having my screen reader. Okay, so reasonable accommodation can be a customized approach that it doesn't, um, how do I wanna word this in not a technical way? It creates or should create an equitable experience. So um, it's not gonna modify it to the point where someone can't do the essential functions of a job, but rather assists someone in being able to perform those essential functions. And those modifications can be made to the hiring process. Um, so with like applications, the interviewing process, and then the job itself. Um, and to answer, and actually Nick, can you read that? Um, question that Frank had in the chat, so I address it correctly. Yes. So he asked, is there a cap on how much a company can go with the reasonable accommodation? I'm sorry. With I'm sorry, that was it. With the reasonable accommodation. Okay. So um, my favorite response, Frank, is it depends. <laughs> um, if that reasonable accommodation is going to provide undue hardship for the organization, then um, I always like to say, and it depends on the size of the organization too. Organizations that um, have 15 people or less um, don't have this, um, it's not covered under the ADA. So it's, we're talking about organizations with 15 employers or more. And I, and I will do an extreme example just to, for the sake of being as extreme and sort of getting the point across. So let's say for your job, you decided that a reasonable accommodation was to have your own personal jet plane to get from appointment to appointment. 
that might might not be and is likely not in the budget for a reasonable accommodation. So a reasonable accommodation to meet those um, travel barriers could be doing a Zoom meeting just as an example. So um, I know that's kind of a silly example, but um, it would depend on the, the that whole statement of, is it an undue hardship for the company? And are there other alternatives that are more cost-effective that still meet the needs of the individual needing the accommodation? Thank I hope you. that answered. Yeah. All right. So before we get into the things that I will be highlighting for AT, um, we have our first discussion question here. Which is... Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, was I supposed to read that? You can, and you're going to uh, paste it in the I'm, chat. Yes, I was. Yep. Um, what types of AT do you use or know others that use for working from home? So feel free to unmute yourself so you can type in the chat, raise your hand. Um, I've made my AT familiar, like it or not, for those that got to hear the screen reader. And Frank has his hand raised, so go ahead. This is Frank. I use a device uh, to count minutes. Um, I use a uh, dual screen and I uh, use um, a portable laptop. So I don't I mean a portable um, type um, thing so I don't have to, um, so I can move around. Awesome. And Frank, you have not seen this presentation before today and you just hit on three of the things that I was going to highlight. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? I have a, a couple that I use. This is Anna Eldon Brady. Um, I am with Michigan State University Extension and part of my accommodation is that I am allowed to still work at home part-time, even though we're back in office. Um, I use uh, wrist rests at my keyboard. I have a certain sized mouse I have a laptop stand to elevate it to eye level so it doesn't irritate my neck. Um, and I also have uh, a special chair that um, supports my spine and neck better than the standard office chairs or the chairs I had at home. Um, and I have a standing mat as well so that if I'm doing the presentation standing up, um, it helps my joints. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And we are going to be talking about physical work space. And then we've got some activity in the chat. Nick, do you want to? Yes. So Bethany, Bethany Steyer said that um, Zoom meetings, and she also uses a timer on her phone and a laptop stand. And then Asian A said that she uses a height adjustable desk, seat cushions, headphones and computer risers. And then Julissa also typed in and she said that she uses a laptop stand. Nice, thank you everyone. Um, lots of things for um, those laptops and desk stations and um, different things. So thank you so much for sharing. We are gonna move on to the next slide. All right, so what are some benefits to remote work? Um, <clears throat> research suggests that it actually helps to increase attendance. Um, there's certainly the ability to create a more flexible schedule and, um, sorry, I'm just, um, the second bullet point highlights that individuals can work in a more controlled environment. So let's explore what some of those things would be. Um, so, for example, if someone has a chemical sensitivity um, and they work in a space where they can't necessarily control all of the smells and 
odors and things that they would encounter by going into the office, um, they could work more safely and effectively from a home office, just as an example. Um, if someone works with a personal care attendant on a regular basis, that allows for them to have a more controlled environment and privacy as they work with their personal care attendant, just as some examples. Okay, and then the image on this slide is of a person working from a table on their laptop and they are seated in their kitchen. Um, so I know when the pandemic first began, it, it really sort of shoved people into a work from home scenario. And I know for the first two weeks, probably, I personally was working from my recliner in my living room. And I even made a post on Facebook, oh, this is great. I'm going to move my recliner back into the office. Well, then after that two weeks, it, it sort of lost its luster, so to speak. It started creating some um, body mechanic issues and it wasn't so comfortable. So then I moved to, I set up a at the time I had a really just like a two seater kitchen table um, that we were not using. And so that sort of became my desk space. And as the pandemic went on and on and on, um, then started to explore actual workstations um, and space within my home. But um, And then Kelly Ejene also just added in that that reminds her of one more that she um, uses, which is lighting. She loves her lamp that she can yes. adjust at her home Absolutely. desk. Lighting is great. <laughs> All right, we'll move to the next slide. Potential drawbacks for remote work. Um, top of the list uh, is social isolation. Um, and even taking this, I know we're talking about work today, but even for folks that are not in a work situation and they're just not getting out that much. Um, social isolation is a real thing, right? And something that's not on here um, that I just thought about is that Zoom fatigue. And you can fill in the blank. That doesn't have to be Zoom necessarily, but it could be any kind of virtual meeting platform. Um, again, what I have learned um, since the start of the pandemic um, when there wasn't that travel or just that time in between going from meeting to meeting that you would have in person, that Zoom fatigue started to set in when you're like, oh, well, now I can just go from this meeting to this meeting to this meeting to this meeting, and then not recognizing that you needed that space in between um, to sort of regroup and... Um, distractions from being at home, those lovely animals that we all, and they have come to say, hey, why are you going into work, mom? <laughs> um, I thought you were staying at home, but they can certainly be a, a distraction, um, whether it be barking or making a cameo on your meeting um, or the kitchen in that snack cupboard being right nearby. Um, and maintaining a routine. So again, and I will totally use myself as an example and throw myself under the bus, so to speak. Um, I was great in the beginning when working from home, like, I, and I still do this, but not to the extent that I, I was in the beginning. Get up and if I'm working from home, I get myself ready for the day, like I'm going into the office. Um, so, that can definitely be a drawback. There might be those days and weeks that drag on and then you slip out of your routine. Um, so maybe you don't have your Zoom camera on because you decided that you weren't gonna get dressed for work that day. So that's certainly a drawback in some instances. So just some things to keep in mind and we'll talk about AT to handle some of these situations. And then the image on this slide is just of a dark, lonely island. <laughs> I thought, why not? Because it can feel that way sometimes.
All right, so this is our second discussion question. I'm just wondering if when we talked about the benefits and drawbacks, if any others came to mind from working from home. Feel free to unmute, raise your hand, use the chat. Frank. Um, as you mentioned, the travel, um, meaning that when you need a copier or a printer, um, you have to make the trip to the office. And um, there's also um, the need um, for that um, communication, whether it's email or phone, uh, rather than just going over to the person next to, you know, next office and asking them the question. Sure. So that face to face interaction. Yes. Yes. And then we've got some activity in the chat. Yes, uh, Tamara says that the benefit is to save on gas from yeah. being in, at home. And then Bethany also um, sent one in. She said um, some disadvantages would be some outdoor noises like sirens or mowers or even airplanes. And then you have to put on your headphones to kind of silence that out. Sure. Yep. And I, that made me think of one, um, which is like, if weather hits and you know your internet connection does go faulty if you need you know for that day some sort of access to that you kind of have that issue going on so yes, that can be a challenge sure. and then we also have one that's a benefit that was from sean um not having to pack or purchase a lunch every day yes. and not having to share a restroom <laughs> yeah i like that one that's that is a yep. good one and I'll tell you, when I started coming back into the office more, I noticed I was eating out a lot more. And so I, I recognized that and had to sort of wheel that in a little bit. So thank you for that. And then Anna says that she second, seconds the benefit from being able to not have to share a bathroom. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for all this input, it's great. And then Asian A says, definitely with the social isolation, but being at the office, the socializing can get in the way. And then taking breaks without feeling like you're being micromanaged. So, and then what was that last one, Nick? It says, um, I have to wear N95 to go in the office. So another benefit is not having to wear the N95 mask. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. especially on the ears. Yep. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. Thank you everyone for all this great discussion. All right, so we are gonna talk about several assistive technology options. Um, so these can, we're gonna talk about them, how they can be helpful in remote work situations and sort of that hybrid situation that many of us are familiar with. Um, so we're going to go over AT for time management, tasks and routines, um, AT for mental health. Uh, we will also talk about AT for low vision, AT for folks that experience hard of hearing and deafness, um, and some miscellaneous AT options. Um, and let's see what I did. Oh, in the physical workspace. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Okay, so AT for time management. I know Frank mentioned that he uses something that helps keep track of his time. And there's, these are um, just things to help get your juices in your brain flowing on and certainly feel free to share things that you have used that work well for you. Um, and then the image on this slide is just of multiple clocks with different styles. Um, my favorite when I'm at home is to use Alexa or if your preference is Google Home, similar concept um, to use it for reminders. Um, creating lists, 
uh, timers, um, just all kinds of things. Um, and I sort of say that Alexa also kind of helps with that social isolation because you can carry on a full conversation with Alexa. You might not like what she has to say, but um, it's one of my most used pieces of AT for sure. Um, and then in our inventory, so much of what um, I'm actually going to talk about today, and I neglected to say this in the beginning, we have in our inventory. So we encourage folks to reach out and set up demonstrations of equipment and loans of equipment and all that good stuff. So one of the most simple things that um, I love is a do not forget door hanger. It has a cutout um, so it can hang right on your door and it has little pouches that fit things like your cell phone, your keys, any mail, um, but it's it's bright red in color and has in huge letters, do not forget. So this is something that we have specifically in our inventory, but think about something even DIY, do it yourself that you could make um, that's not made from this canvas type material. Um, just something that's gonna grab your attention and things that um, can help to keep at, at the top of your mind. So, and then this one, um, the, the whiteboard options, again, simple, simple, simple. Um, and I was contemplating on whether putting this on the task and routines side or time management and I see how it can fit both just to kind of keep you on track. Um, one of the things I just learned about and I couldn't find the link after I read it, it was like one of those um, rabbit holes that you fall into when you're on social media. There is a, a whiteboard option now, um, very simple. It's intended to sit on your desk like a flat desk calendar, but you just keep it to the side of your laptop and you just can write on it as you go. And I thought, well, that's just very simple. And it was like under 10 bucks. So um, just thought it was a basic, fun, easy option. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. AT for routines and tasks. And quickly going back to the Alexa options, there's ways to set up routines with Alexa. And if you have questions about that or um, just need help with it in general, that is something else that we can do as part of the AT program. Um, if you have an Alexa, but you're not using it to its full capacity, we can come to you, um, show you the different things and get some different things set up with you. Um, um, using apps. Um, so I'm a huge fan of using what's called native apps in your smartphones and tablets. Um, so for example, I'm an Apple user. And so with that comes the reminders app or the notes app, and there's all kinds of things that you can do, or even with the alarms feature, you can name each alarm. So it's a very specific thing. So um, let's say every Monday you have to do a meeting and it's via Zoom or however, and you've got your calendar, but man, sometimes those calendars just don't, I mean, you've got so many things coming at you, right? Um, so you can set that up in your alarms and name it in your phone, for example, or on your tablet. Um, different apps like in, in the resource list. And Nick, if you want to go ahead and share that now, there are some different apps that I have linked. It's certainly not, I mean, there's probably millions of apps by now, but some of those that I linked in there are Forest and Trello. And then can plan. Um, those offer a good sampling of um, visual and auditory and um, just you know writing tasks down and things. So um, I'm just going through and making sure. 
Um, noise canceling headphones can be great for um, anything that might cause a distraction that would hinder your task or time management. So, all right, I'm gonna move to the next slide. AT for mental health. Um, there's so many things that you can do. Um, and the image on this slide is someone meditating while seated behind a laptop. Um, so some of the things that we have in inventory, um, lighting to mimic sunlight. So we actually have a set of glasses. So you might be familiar with the lamps and things that are for that seasonal affective disorder. Um, so we have glasses that you can wear that um, help with that as an example, or um, just recently in that same article that I was stuck in a rabbit hole on, they have this new newer alarm clock that before your alarm actually goes off to start your day, it starts and it's a 20 minute process, I think it said, um, where it mimics a sunrise so that when you wake up to your alarm, um, it, that sunrise, um, the mimic of the sunrise actually is supposed to help you wake up more easily. And they said it's not only that, it's just pretty to look at. So um, just something to think about there. Um, weighted blankets. Um, these are a part of our inventory as well. Um, so if you weren't sure about um, purchasing a weighted blanket. Maybe you've heard all about them, but you just weren't sure if it were for you. Um, we have them available for loan. Um, and then companion pets. Uh, <laughs> I just heard in the chat, wait, you have robotic companion pets that we can borrow. Yes. Um, we have a variety and I had no idea <laughs> they would end up <laughs> I had no idea that they would end up being as popular as they are, but we have cats and dogs and actually we have, um, it hasn't gotten much traction in terms of use, but we do have a um, fish tank that has like jellyfish in it. So you put water in it and then you put these jellyfish that are not real jellyfish in it and they move like they're moving in water like actual jellyfish would but the the robotic pets we have cats and dogs and we have them in different breeds um so yes people can absolutely take those out on loan it's great for um social isolation for individuals that maybe they've had to move and they no longer can take their pet with them uh, maybe it's difficult to care for an actual pet so these um, companion pets um, they interact with your voice they interact with your touch. Um, so the cat, for example, it purrs, it looks at you when you're talking to it, it rolls over, it kind of rolls on its side. It doesn't roll completely over, but yeah. All right, so this is AT for low vision and blindness. Um, definitely a lot of technology that I am familiar with. Um, and we have, all of these things in our inventory, or at least available for demo. So when you think about screen reading and screen magnification, those already come built into your laptops, desktops, tablets, and phones. And we can show you where to find those so you can maximize um, your use of said devices. Um, Handheld video and stand magnifiers. We have so many, <laughs> I don't know, two full totes of just magnifiers. We have a lot. We're really happy about magnifiers here. Um, large print and talking products. Um, gosh, all kinds of stuff. The OrCam, I have a video. Um, and Nick, did you get that? Yes. Okay. So this, I couldn't get the other video to work that compared the OrCam My Eye to the OrCam Reader. So the video is actually just of the OrCam My Eye, but know that there are two different devices 
and um, they can be used, they each can be used for a variety of individuals, but the more the OrCam My Eye is typically used for folks that experience vision loss, and the OrCam Reader is typically used for individuals who experience um, a print disability. Maybe you have a reading disability, um, maybe you've experienced a brain injury and um, you need help with reading things out loud or whatever it might be. But this video just highlights the my eye. So I'm going to stop screen share. And that way, Nick can share the video. And I not I can't recall if this video has captions. I think it does. One moment. I'm seeing it already. And I will share. All right. So just to make sure, can someone let me know if they can see that? I'm getting that it's there. So. Okay. Good. Nope, it's not. Can you stop it? Did you share sound? Is there sound? Can you hear sound? I heard it, but it's very faint. So I don't know if. Um... Let me just make sure. And while Nick is figuring that out, for anyone that is participating and is concerned about time, we will probably go five minutes over that one o'clock time. Um, Introduce. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Introducing Allcam MyEye, the most advanced wearable AI for vision impairment. The tiny device magnetically snaps onto the side of glasses and instantly reads text to you from any surface. All you have to do is point. White chocolate cookies. Allcam's innovative smart reading feature works instantly and discreetly. Start smart reading. Read me the headlines. Found two headlines. First result, or can my eye to name to times list in one? Second result, Genesis Prize Foundation. Read me first article. Or can my eye to an Israeli maid system to... Or can my eye can also assist with your orientation. What's in front of me? One door to your left and one door to your right. Identifying objects and helping with your mobility. What's in front of me? One person is in front of you, one empty chair to your right. Seamlessly recognize faces. Matt Jansen. Money notes. $50. Products and more, all in real time, without the need for an internet connection. Lightweight, intuitive operation in a device the size of a finger. Orcam My Eye is used by tens of thousands of people in 25 languages and 50 countries helping them to live more independently and improving their quality of life. Orcam My Eye, personal AI technology with a life-changing impact. Thank you, Nick. Okay, I'll start screen share again. Okay. Um, feel free to put any questions that you might have about OrCam in the chat, but our next slide um, following this, I believe, is the discussion question slide. So, um, so these are just different things to consider when um, individuals who experience deafness or who are hard of hearing using virtual spaces such as we're using today, but having ASL, American Sign Language available, as well as CART captioning. Um, certainly with your tablets and phones, you have built-in features and apps like Live Transcribe or CaptionMate. Um, and those are 
applications that can take spoken content and put them into text. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, um, but just different things to help folks be more included. Um, and then there's certainly modified phones and things like that. AT for your physical workspace. I know some folks mentioned quite a bit of what they are already using. So we'll go through this very quickly. There's a sit to stand desk, um, different trackballs and different mice. Um, modified keyboards and those dual monitors are certainly especially helpful. I think the most I've seen or heard someone talk about was having three monitors. Which I don't, I don't think that would work well for me, even if I could see. But <laughs> um, so, all right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next. All right, I wanted to include a miscellaneous um, AT for remote work. Um, and some of these things you might be going, huh? How is that AT for remote work? Um, Um, I'm just waiting for my. So fidgets can certainly help with um, limiting distraction, um, keeping on task, um, having the, so we have a couple of different um, items for identifying. One's the Foxy Reader and the other is the Pen Friend. And those can help with putting stickers on different things for labeling and then recording a message. So um, it can help um, if someone has a reading disability or if someone has a sight impairment, it's a way to keep things labeled and organized. Um, and then the USB power diffuser, I thought that, um, Diffusers is something that I use and certainly you would want work from home, um, thinking about chemical sensitivities and things like that. It's not something that you would necessarily use in an office, but it can help keep um, you relaxed and focused and just something fun to kind of have around. And then the Keurig, and that's why I was like, people might think, why is that AT? Um, so I like to share the experience of myself um, and fill in the blank. If you have limited mobility in your hands, your dexterity, fine motor is impacted. Um, so for me in my vision impairment, um, and I'm certainly not speaking to everyone who has a vision impairment experience. I'm just speaking to my own. Um, there was a period a few years ago where in like a two week span, I spilled hot coffee on my hand, like three different times. And that was not typical, but I thought, gosh, I enough of this. So I love my coffee and the Keurig was the solution for me. Um, so it helps me to um, get my coffee that I ever so need to be caffeinated um, to help me in the morning. Um, but yeah, it's a way that Yes, and then it was said that when you can't lift the full weight of a coffee pot, absolutely. So that is why I put it in as AT. Okay, and then here just really quickly, AT for a hybrid schedule. Um, so those times when you're going back and forth to the office, you need to consider, um, are the things that you're using for AT for your workstation, are they portable enough or do you need two full workstations? Um, are you having to navigate transportation? Um, so there's different apps to help with that. So I just highlighted transit as an example. It's an app that highlights all of the, the closest um, transit options and bus lines. Um, and the paratransit system that I use, um, they actually came out with an app so I can schedule rides directly from that app. And there's of course ride sharing options and things like that. And then there are actually um, AT options for a vehicle itself, or even the swivel seat is um, picture um, a lazy Susan type style 
where it 360 degrees and it has a cushioned seat. You can use it in a car. You can use it even if you are working from home and have it, maybe you're working from your kitchen table and it just helps you be a little more mobile if it's difficult for you to move your legs and things like that. The swivel seat will move you. So you're you're moving less of your legs and more of the, the trunk of your body, if you will. Um, and then the um, car caddy is another simple device that you can use to better help get you in and out of vehicles. Um, and then I just highlighted um, if you need help keeping track of routines, those things that we have talked about so the different apps and different alarms. Um, I haven't quite got, gotten used to yet the Apple Watch, but I know folks use um, smart watches and that can really help keep you on track. Um, even considering using the GPS as a part of that to help if you're traveling to and from the office, um, but helping limit distractions you can turn your email notifications off as an example and have reminders set so that when you are either going from work or staying at home and working, um, it's another great tool. And I know that the iOS, I'm not sure about the other ones, um, but the Apple Watch does have fall detection in it as well, which can be great um, if that's something that is an especially needed tool for you. So just some different things to think about. All right, and before we end, I just wanted to mention um, and get folks feedback on, so we've talked about all this other AT. Did this spur your thoughts? Did you think of other things that weren't mentioned? Um, did you think of things, or did you think when things were mentioned, oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. Um, just sort of feel free to type in the chat, raise your hand, unmute. Well, I thought of one, this is Anna Eldon Grady again. Um, I, uh, when you were talking about physical space, I thought about temperature um, and that a space heater can be adaptive tech or, or heated gloves or whatnot. Um, my office gets cold and I have autoimmune disorders that affect blood flow and stiffness. So I hadn't really thought about my space heater as adaptive tech for my workspace before, but in that context, it, it really is because it lessens the impact of a disabling environment. Absolutely, going back to that, you have more control over your physical environment when you're working from home. So that's a great example. And that reminds me too, um, I have lots of Alexa devices at home, but I have one that controls my thermostat. So if I am working, um, I can just yell to my device, hey, turn up the thermostat. <laughs> so great example, thank you. Any others? Sean is highlighting Be My Eyes. That is not an app that I highlighted in the presentation, but it is a wonderful app. I encourage those who do experience low vision or blindness to check it out, it's free. And if you wanted to volunteer to be a visual interpreter, if you will, for folks that need the service, um, I think it's just great. So um, when it first came out, you might've had to wait a little bit to get a volunteer to sign on to the call, but now that it's been around for quite some time, um, I don't know as if I've had any real wait time to speak of, and it's it's great. So thank you, Sean, for highlighting that.
and it's a great alternative. So OrCam is great. And um, of course it doesn't work as seamlessly as the video highlights in my opinion, but I mean, it's a, it's a video to highlight how great it is. So <laughs> um, it, it is rather responsive and it is a great product, but it's a rather expensive product. So that's something to keep in mind too. Any other bits of info before we move on? All right, this is just the thank you slide with my name, Kelly Blackwell, and uh, feel free to contact me. Um, and the resource guide that Nick has um, posted in the chat throughout um, also has my contact information. And there is a link to a survey in the resource guide um, that helps it. It's just a few quick questions, but it helps us um, guide our content moving forward and how we provide our um, trainings. So if you would be ever so gracious to fill that out. Um, thank you for spending your lunch hour with us. And certainly if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My phone number is 517. 333-2477, extension 352, or my email is k-e-l-l-i-e -L -L -E at m-y-m-d-r-c.org. I'd also like to thank the um, CART captioner as well as the ASL interpreter for today, and Nick for chat moderating. This was his first time doing it, so thank you, Nick. You did a great job, and thanks thank to you. my colleagues who joined and to everyone else. I hope you have a great Tuesday and a great rest of your week. And join us in October. We have two Tech Tuesday sessions, um, one for fall cleanup and then one for winter prep.